Five years of college. Four credits. School was not my best subject. They held classes before eight in the morning. How can anyone expect to learn anything that early? When I did make it to class, I remember hearing my biology professor, Mr. Nosedal, claim that my great-great-great-great-grandfather was an ape. My response of, does that make you a monkey's uncle, earned me an instant F on my term paper about the theory of evolution. I even pointed out that he looked like the missing link because he was Greek. <sighs> Some people have no sense of humor. I was better educated through Woody Woodpecker than my college biology class. After watching a few episodes and reading a book by Gary Parker, I began thinking. The woodpecker lives by banging its head into trees. How does survival of the fittest prompt you to say to yourself, hey, wouldn't it be fun to slam my skull into that ficus over there? For most creatures, this would cause a few problems. Just think back to crashing your bike into your neighbor's oak tree and you'll know what I mean. Creation says the woodpecker was designed from the beginning for pecking at wood. Evolution claims that mutations gradually changed the woodpecker over millions of years to its current form. So, using evolution, how much wood could a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker would peck wood? Sorry, couldn't resist. If you're banging your nose against a tree, your nose better be tough. Let's say you're a woodpecker, and evolution has provided you with a tough beak. You decide to try it out. Whack! You throw your head into a tree. Your nose is fine, but your skull is now crushed. Do you know how hard it is to find a date for the prom when your face is concave in shape? Perhaps evolutionary mutation gave you a heavy-duty skull first. Whack! You throw your head into a tree, and now your skull is okay. But the only thing your nose is good for is accordion lessons. And there is no social life or evolutionary future in that either. The problem is that your beak and skull must be tough together. Let's continue. When you hit that tree, your eyelids automatically snap shut. But what if you began pecking before evolution graced you with eyelids? Wood chips get into your eyes. Your eyes pop out from the g-force of the sudden stop. Now you're a blind woodpecker and unable to find a date or a tree. You die. Single. And hungry. Woodpeckers eat beetles living inside the trees. Of course, beetles hear this pounding, so they tunnel deeper into the tree to escape the noise. Much like we do when hearing the booming bass sound coming from an oncoming teenager's car. Getting at the beetles is not a problem, though, if you're a woodpecker, because you also have a long, sticky tongue. But if you get a long, sticky tongue by chance, where do you keep it? It hangs from your beak. Girl woodpeckers hate that you're drooling everywhere. You daily step on your tongue when leaving the shower. And during your flight to woodpecker school, you fly too close to a branch, snag it, wrap yourself around a twig, and hang upside down all day like Charlie Brown and his kite. Evolution doesn't solve this problem. But if it's your job to create woodpeckers, and you designed the long, sticky tongue, you can design a place to put that thing. The woodpecker slips its tongue into a muscular sheath that wraps around the skull, under the scalp, and inserts into the right nostril. Okay, so it's, it's gross, but it makes good science. And it also makes good sense if you're planning ahead. But that poses a real problem if you believe only in time, chance, and evolution. If you like what you heard, share this episode with others who you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to join this weirdo congregation too. To join this weirdo family yourself, find us on Facebook, listen to previous messages, even find out how to join me in my daily Bible studies, visit WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. You can find the sources I used for this week's message in the show notes. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless. <laughs>